How's it going, everyone? I'm Nostalgic Dave, and welcome back to the Nostalgia Frame. Okay, so we're back at our school, apparently. I don't trust it. Hi. Never thought I'd live to see home again. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Anything else? That's it. Yes, there's no Satoshi, or Miss Yui, or anyone else, huh? That's a bit off-putting. The needle on the clock in the hall is pointing to eight. There's not a soul in sight. That's... I feel stuck. To say the same thing with when it, venturing out in search of others, you find that even the janitor has likely gone home. Lights are out, and the halls are pitch black. Only the red glow of the light next to the fire extinguisher offers an, any respite from the quaint, quiet darkness of the school hallway. Standing around in the darkened corridor of our school building at 8 p.m., in the, it, it just feels so surreal. I'll bet. What was that? As the thunder and rain grow in intensity, the windows begin to condensate with moisture, turning white in contrast to the corridor's sea of black. Is this reality? Was everything up until now just a dream? Where am I right now? What am I doing? <coughs> Call it. This is. That's not good. Shinazaki, what's wrong? Hello? Okay. What the hell is this? Beats me. It's not over, is it? Why is it an over? Why? Damn it. You're here too now. It's you. Oh boy. Go back. Don't come any closer. You know what? Yeah, I figured she wasn't going anywhere. It was a rainy evening after school. Just like this one. Huh? On the day I was kidnapped. I remember, I had a fight with my mom that morning. Why is she telling us this? I don't know. You know what? That statement is close enough to what mine was. I didn't want to see her face. So, after school, I decided that instead of going home, I'd park myself in the outdoor walkway for a little and watch the rain. Okay. That's when Mr. Yoshiza oh, Yoshikazu showed up. That name, I swear. He sat down next to me. I told him all about my fight with Mom. And he listened really closely. Just kept saying, uh-huh, uh-huh. He was sick and couldn't speak much, you see, but he was a very kind man. I really liked him. But then... Oh boy. You two are nice people. I'm so sorry. She's so tiny. Must be fifth grader? 
Yuki Kano. Right? Yep. Thank you for what you did back there. For making the effort to help those of us who were killed in that school. Didn't we succeed, though? So, why are you still here? No, you didn't. Called it. It's not over. But we returned your tongues. We gave you back your ability to speak out. We even got your murderer to repent for what he did. Is it just that you can't forgive him, no matter what? Appeasing us isn't about forgiveness. It doesn't matter if we forgave or not. Repentance is between the criminal and the victim. It's the sole act capable of moving us. We exist as fragments of a sacred ground upon which heavenly host is sealed. I believe that moving us is your best course of action. But it's not enough. His repentance just wasn't enough. Why? They're kids, that's why. So you're saying his words, the words spoken by the doll, weren't good enough to appease you? That's not... Huh? So, what then? Why do you feel the need to trap one innocent stranger after another in that godforsaken place? You child spirits are the ones who summoned us there, aren't you? That's not true. Then who the hell summoned us there? What do you mean by that? We're just the cogs that hold the closed spaces together. Hmm. But you, you killed Suzumoto, didn't you? Wait! Huh? Let's... Let's hear her out. I'm just glad I was able to get even the two of you back to safety. Why the hell are you suddenly so concerned about us? I heard about a situation like this from my sister once. Mm. A lost soul whose life was ended violently and abruptly, leaving her with a mountain of worries and regrets. It's kind of like stopping short at the edge of madness. Okay. With all sorts of thoughts and feelings swirling around in your head, your kindly nature and your sudden hatred and panic begin to spin around and around. You just start acting out without any sort of control. Your sister's some kind of medium or something? Yeah, something like that. So, what you're saying is, this little girl and the creepy little girl we met the four are two sides of the same coin. E that's what I'm getting. I feel for you. I really do. So please. Please. Bring the rest of them back. Rashida, Miss Yui, and everyone else too. Bring them all back home. That's not possible. Come on. You can do it, right? I don't think that's possible anymore, since one of them is dead. Why not? Those closed spaces have eaten a lot of innocent souls. Far too many, in fact. The grudges of those who died there have filled every last corner of them. There's no room left. And because the agony and pain has nowhere else to go? Oh no. 
begun feeding on the minds of souls like yours. Pretty much. It won't be long before I turn back into a vengeful spirit who attacks people like you without mercy. So, we're going to lose you as an ally then? Crap. Gosh dang it. So why don't you just hurry up and bring them back? Right now! Isn't there any way for us to save Moshida and the others? Most of them, yeah. There may be one way. You have to go back to where you started. What is this? I think you already know. You have to return to the closed spaces. Find all four of us Heavenly Host serial kidnapping and murder victims and put us all to rest. Then, the closed spaces won't have their cogs anymore, so they'll begin to fall apart. And you just might get your friends back. You expect us to go back? And this time, it's not just having one person left to appease. We have to go back to the drawing board and appease all four of you? Yeah. That's gonna suck. Why couldn't you tell us the reason our previous efforts weren't good enough? What is there to hide? It's just something I don't want to remember, but if you really want to know, I'll tell you. I'll tell you everything that happened. Yuki's spirit gently took hold of Ayumi's hand, and in an instant, their two be beings seemed to merge together into a single mind. What's going? Yeah, boy. It hurts. It hurts. Again, yeah, that sound. What is going on? So what actually happened? Huh? What happened to me? Didn't I pass out? So why am I fully aware right now? I can't see a thing. And I can't move. It's like that feeling you get when you're really tired. Mm, sleep paralysis, I think. Yeah. Uh, excuse me? Where... Oh boy. Why can't I move? I can't move my body because of sleep paralysis, I guess. But I can clearly see the room I'm in now. There's one boy and two girls in here. Aside from myself. I recognize them. They're the children who were killed in Heavenly Host during that incident. But they're still alive! Oh no. Is this basically a flashback of what happened? Unfortunately, they're all bound hand and foot. And just sprawled out on the floor. And so am I. That's the real reason I can't move. Yep. Oh, this is not gonna end well. Oh, that guy does not look friendly. Somebody, please, save me! Oh? <laughs> no, stop! No, please, no! Oh. Oh. Now I'm blindfolded. And 
see a thing that's happening to me. Since my hands and feet are tied up, I can't remove the blindfold either. It just makes everything so much worse. I guess because I can't see, I begin to listen more intently. The helpless cries of the other children echo off the walls of the cramped room. I'm so scared. It feels like my head's going to explode. What are you doing to me? Why am I blindfolded? Untie me! Cut off the ropes! I want to be able to use my hands and feet. Please! Please! kept begging and pleading, but all I heard in response was the man walking away from me. In. Or. Der. O. K. In order? What? I don't want to know what's going on. I've never heard screaming like this before. It's pure primal terror. Cutting through the air like a perfect sine wave. It's the boy at the end. Feels like he's been screaming for an eternity. He's been killed right now. That made sense. God, what the hell is he doing to him? No one deserves this. Why isn't God allowing him to fall unconscious so he doesn't have to suffer? That's an interesting question. It's been at least half an hour now. Those inhuman screams of a young boy being ripped apart from the inside have finally come to a halt. Yeah, that. Without even a single moment of silence, the first of the girls in line is the next to scream for her life. And the symphony goes on. <laughs> yeah, this is not... I don't like this. I can't take any more of this. I'm losing my mind. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it! Stop it! Still going on? Come on, just die already. Die already? What is wrong with me? You know what? I don't care. Just get it over with. Leave me in peace. Oh, man. Finally. After hearing a sound like a heavy object being dropped, the noises stopped. The room grew quiet again. Uh oh. Those footsteps are getting closer. All my hair is standing on end at this point. Everything below my stomach feels like it's frozen. Like I've suddenly been stricken with severe diarrhea. Ew! You couldn't come up with a better comparison? In order. Why am I relieved by the silence? The kid next to me just died. Which means it's my turn now, jeez. Someone's got me by the hair. 
they're pulling my head up and taking off my blindfold, which means I get to see the face of my killer. And then the third, the one that's my blindfold is removed, the sight that appeared before me was more horrific than I, anything I could possibly have imagined. The person staring back at me, brandishing a blood-soaked pair of sewing scissors, wasn't the large man from earlier at all. Wait, what? It was one of the children. The girl in the red dress, right? Of course it was. at all she was okay I'm stretching because reasons she was staring intently at me with soulless gray eyes <laughs> no 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 just started giggling do I have to hear it Actually, that time I was screenshotting the thumbnail, because there's no way I'm not using that. <laughs> yes, I have to hear the thing. <laughs> okay, so that's why. That explains a lot, actually. Uh oh. He's opening and closing the bloodied scissors over and over again. The sound kept echoing through the room. Then, she took those dull, rusty, thoroughly blood-soaked blades and slowly brought them closer and closer to my left eye. How? Why? Why is it you? <laughs> no. Uh -huh. Yeah, I don't like it either. As I said, I don't like it either. Third victim was stabbed in the left eye and indeterminate, an indeterminate number of times. Till her eyeball became soup like. Ew! She was eventually just left like that, slowly bleeding to death in horrible agony. Strangely, it was only after these mutilations had already been inflicted that the killer went back and se severed the victim's tongue. Oh, I get it. Learning the truth about these proceedings is shocking in, even to me. It makes it nearly impossible to accept the murder as anything but a monster. Bearing witness to every moment of this was a seven-year-old girl named Sachiko. Okay, sure. In many ways, she's the most pitiable and long-suffering of them all. But it was through her tearful, frightened testimony that Yoshikazu Yanagihori was officially charged. Now, going back to the hunt for information on this unfortunate girl's whereabouts, it was her words that ultimately led to Yoshikazu's sentencing, yeah, I know. Therefore, it comes... I've already read this, haven't I? This is starting to sound familiar. <sighs> Yeah, I already read this. If you need a refresher, you can go ahead and pause and read it yourself, but this is merely conjecture. Yeah, I already read this. One question keeps nagging at the back of my mind. Was Yoshikazu really the murderer of the three victims? 
Is it possible this crime was not actually perpetrated by him at all? Think about it. In his final days, Yoshikazu was incapable of communicating with others through speech. Despite his childlike perversion, he'd always been a personable and friendly man. As the saying goes, he wouldn't have hurt a fly. All his relatives, friends, and neighbors confirmed as much. Shocked to hear that such a kindly man could commit these unconscionable atrocities? Certainly had no motive for the crime, either. There was nothing for him to gain from it. Then again, he may simply have lost his mind. Look at his father. It was around the same time that Principal Takamine, Takamine, yeah, oh, here's Principal blah blah blah, I'm not reading that, suddenly began speaking in tongues and acting in a most peculiar way. Not to mention scribbling incomprehensibly in gibberish all over his walls as if possessed. He seemed frightened of someone and would often be found crouching in the corner of his office, moaning and thrashing when visitors came by. You can wind up in such a beleaguered state with no warning, then perhaps so too could his son. Maybe. We're looking at a curse far more powerful than anything, yeah. Time, from the time it opened its doors to the day it closed them forever. Heavenly Host Elementary School's sealed basement room has existed as some form of cursed ground. So, to get rid of the curse, we gotta destroy the basement. Find the underlying cause. We must go back beyond the infamous kidnapping and murder incident. Back a whole 20 years. I believe I may have found a clue that could shed some light on the situation. Maybe a bit far-fetched, as leads go, but it's a lead nonetheless. Regrettably, this heavenly host was not only closed down by demolished but demolished altogether. Another school built in its place. It's no longer possible to investigate the basement room directly. But my prestige has found what may be the next best thing. Something that could make the impossible possible once more. Preparations are be being made to pursue this lead even now. Oh, jeez. Sure not to miss the next installment. Okay. Yeah, I've definitely read that. Okay. That was... Chapter 5 has been unlocked in the Return and Pursuit. Extra 4 has been unlocked. We now know kind of... Well, we know who the official antagonist of the story is. No surprise, girl with the red dress. She shows up everywhere in this series. So I'm not surprised. But we now know, and we will continue to find out what happens when we start Chapter 5 next time. This was an extensive episode, so next time will probably be a shorter episode. Either way, thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Corpse Party Remake. If you liked it, make sure to push that like button and so far you can't see it anymore. And if you really liked it, consider subscribing to the channel. Got a suggestion for a horror game, whether RPG or not, that you'd like to see on here? Let us know in the comments below. Want to check out one that's been done prior to this? Click the link in the bottom right corner to try and take you to that destination. Or if you missed any of the stops on this ride, click the link across my head here and our train will take you there. In the meantime, this train's off to its next destination, but we hope to catch you guys in another ride. Bye.